Doc? Well, okay, I've asked Dan to speak also tonight on, um, um, on prepping. Uh, I particularly like his, I've, I've heard him speak before on the topic. I like his perspective, uh, but I particularly wanted to get uh, his input on what he is expecting to see where we're headed as a nation right now what he sees coming down the line that we should be concerned about. In other words, what is it that we're prepping for? I present to you again, Sergeant Major Dan Page. Retired Sergeant Major. <laughs> Retired Sergeant Major Dan uh, Page. I want to pass a couple things around. I'll start one out here. Uh, I'm passing you two watches that I've actually, uh, excuse me, worn in combat. You may not think that watches are important, but I can assure you that they are. Uh, there may come a situation where you need to have somebody meet you at a given time unless you can read the stars and all that real good this is the watch that you will those are called Seiko military there is another one here that I'm that I'm testing out right now this is this is built by the British government it says MWC that's military watch complex get rid of the digital ones just throw them away they're battery operated get them out because they will fail you at the most inappropriate time. You want a watch that is reliable, and those watches are very good. I don't know which one's where. That one down there has been through three combat tours. That one down there, I think that's the small one. That's a Seiko. You can get that for under $100, and they're very good for what you need. The larger one, after I turned 20, my eyes kind of started changing, so I had something a little bit bigger. And that one there goes for about 125 that one right there, I think I paid 150 for that, and the the British government built those for the South Af South African Army, so there is a surplus on them right now. Now they do have some fake ones out with that watch right there. So if you take look below uh, and just above the um, the six o'clock uh, number, there is some writing there. That's the one you want. That watch is good to a thousand meters diving. I don't think anybody here. I know I'm not going to do it. Yeah. And it's a very good watch. It's got what they call an H53 movement in it. It's very, very good. I'm testing that one right now. Those other two are am amply available on, uh, on Amazon, eBay, and things like that. You're going to need a watch. Now those watches are self-winding. Now they do have another one that you can hand wound. People tend to break those because they get nervous, they get you know, you should wind them at a specific time every day and they'll crank them up and break the spring. That one there, you do not have to worry about it. Time is important. <coughs> if you find yourself in a situation I'm going to talk about in a few minutes and you have to meet your your daughter or your husband or whoever in, in 10 minutes or 5 hours, you need time. So watches are extremely important. And you don't want to wear a, to wear a very expensive one because the bad guys after they kill you they will take your watch <laughs> do not do not wear wedding rings especially gold because they will cut your fingers off and they will take your teeth out of third gold also it will happen to you so don't do it uh, I talked about communication sir I'm gonna pass that down to you you take a look at it pass it down line uh, ma'am you take a look at this and pass it down that side uh, if you find yourself in an old in a really hostile environment. Um, you need equipment that's going to work. The little radios that you're talking about this, this morning, get rid of them. Don't, don't even go that route. They won't work. Those radios there are submersible for up to 30 minutes. They're, they're IPS7. That means they can go underwater and they'll work fine. Now, again, these are VHF radios. That means they are a line of sight. This stuff of a radio having 56 miles is stuff. Don't work. We've tried it, done it, will not work. All them radios promising you 36 miles is stuff. That's a lie. First hill they get, you're out of communication. And I want to tell you something right now. When somebody's getting their backside handed to them and all, and you're, where are you at? How, honey, what's going on? Wife, husband, and all you get is <laughs> you get nervous. So make sure that you get uh, combo. Now I also have two masks here. This one I'm passing to this young man over here is an M40. This mask I'm passing to this young lady here is an M50. The M50 is the newest mask that the military is using and they're up to an M53 already. But there's only minor changes. This mask over here, the M50, I'll talk about that first. 
If you go on eBay and get them right now, you have to be very careful because they got paintball masks that look identically to that, and they'll try to sell you that as an M50 protective mask. That mask you will not pay for less than $150 for them. So if they if you have a mask on there that says 50 bucks, it ain't that mask. That mask there, you can actually sleep in this mask right here unassisted. You can go to sleep in that and you breathe normally. Now the difference between that one, that was full face value. So if you crank a weapon up, you can see with both eyes. Okay? That's that mask right there. The M40 is just as good. There's nothing wrong with the M40 mask, okay? The problem with the M40 mask, it's forced air breathing. You have to force it. It's deliberate. <sighs> and you have to have somebody watch you when you sleep because you can suffocate to death with that mask right there. But they both do the same thing. They're very good. The problem with this mask is when you put the rifle up, your, your filter will, will hit it. So if you're shooting left-handed, I have to put it on the right-hand side. If you're shooting right-handed, you have to put the filter on the left-hand side, which is very, very minor. You can use, uh, you also have a drinking tube with both of those. When you are going into a apocalyptic situation, you must have a mask with a drinking tube. You can go three weeks without food, three days without water, and you are what we call 10-7 with mileage. That means you'll be dead. Okay, so you have to have something. <clears throat> now, I don't know if you know this about a protective mask, is that in a chemical environment, you've got nine seconds to put it on and it, don't worry about it after that. That's all you got is nine seconds. If you haven't been training in that, you might, you might want to do that. And the reason it's nine seconds uh, is because the, aver it, the average man is about six foot. It takes nine seconds for it to rise up to your nose level and you're dead. That's the reason for it's nine four. seconds. You know. <laughs> well, we're gonna stand him on a block. <laughs> I'm, I'm just—I don't mean to pick up, man. Because <laughs> I'm not six foot either. I'm I've five been ten. My whole life, it's all right. So, so, so I only get seven and a half seconds. <laughs> but you have to do this, do this, and do this, and do this. I would go for the M50 if you can afford it. Even if you have to save up your money, I would go for the M50. That said, they're hard to come by. Uh, some people are going to, if you go on the website, the new they cost about six, seven hundred dollars. They're very, very expensive. But they are worth it because you can breathe normal. You just breathe normal and you can sleep and nobody has to watch you. With the M40, you better put a guard up. Because if you see somebody ain't breathing, you need to walk over and say, hey, wake up. Because that's, uh, but they're good. Now the best mask in the world is what they call a German Drager. But they're, they're really, really expensive. And these here are just as good. They will ser serve the purpose. Uh, I want to talk to you now about a real something that an apocalyptic situation could be. The, the hardest thing for a person to, to, to exist in an apocalyptic situation is to face reality. That I'm in an apocalyptic situation and it ain't going to get no better. It's only going to get worse. You have to get it in your head and in your mind that you are in an apocalyptic situation. In denial ain't gonna do no good. It's only gonna speed your death, and I'm talking from experience. You have to get your head in the game that you're there. America is here now. It ain't no tomorrow, it's here. You have to get your head in the game of what's happening to America. Denying it ain't, ain't, is not gonna make it go away. The second thing I would tell you, which is probably the most important thing, is to get your spiritual house in order. And the reason I tell you that is everybody will fail you in that situation except Jesus Christ. If you got him and you together, you are the majority because he will never ever leave you. So I am telling you from the bottom of my heart, get your spiritual house in order. Been there, done that. The people that you think are will be with you will not be with you. They will go. Self-preservation is the most dominant thing in the world in a person when they're facing death and you will in an apocalyptic situation, people will, will desert you. The third thing most important to you is your weapon. There is nothing more important than you than you to know everything about that weapon. And ladies and gentlemen, I do mean everything. 
when I was active duty military, I, and, and I spent somewhere about 37 years in there, we would train with those things like I just never saw it before. There's something called muscle memory. Muscle memory, you see that I'm armed. I don't have to think about where my hand's going on. Somebody threatens me, it's there. I, I don't even have to think about it. It's an automatic reflex. That hand knows exactly where to go, and the, the weapon is not moving around in my hand. I know the holster, I know the mechanics about getting it out, because I drill on that. But I'm by myself, I make sure that the weapon is unloaded, and I drill on it. Even today, and I'm retired, and I still drill with that weapon. It's called dry firing. That's all I do for about 20 minutes. It's a mechanic to me. I don't even think about it. So you need to get your spiritual house in order. You need to realize the situation that you're in is, is it could be lethal. You need to train with your equipment. This stuff is going out once a month, ain't going to cut it. When, when, when the Army National Guard and the Army Reserve goes on active duty, we have to go through what we call a platform launch to get us up to date with the active Army because we just do it once a month, two days a week, and, and three weeks every year. So we're not where we need to be. So the active Army, when we go on active duty, they pound us in the salt to make sure we're up there. So if you're going to be involved in any kind of militia training or uh, neighborhood watch program, you have to train. You've got to do it so you don't have to think about it. It's an automatic reflex. There are certain things that Dan Page does, because I've done it all my life. I just do it automatically. I don't even think about it. When I dress, I dress with ripstop. I don't wear anything else. I use ripstop, and the reason for that is because if it rips, it stops. You don't want to be walking around with with your body parts exposed because of chemicals and all kinds of stuff, snake bites, chiggers, ticks, blah, blah, <coughs> whatever it may be. So you have to realize those things. It's, it's a complete system. The, the biggest thing is getting your head in the game. I can tell you right now, if the situation goes, what I'm going to talk about in a few minutes, 90% of the American people are going to be dead within six months because they don't have their head in the game. They don't believe this is happening. If you go out here right now and talk to half the people, they think everything's boo dinky down. That's a Vietnamese term for everything's okay. You, you can't get inside their head because they're in deniability. They're denying it. They will not accept what you tell them that our government is corrupt and totally out of control. And the only way to build it is from the bottom up, not the top down. And this stuff is coming, ladies and gentlemen, or I would not be here. It's coming. It's here right now. My specialty in the Army was psychological warfare. I've been all over the country, and I know what's coming. And I can't get people to believe me when I talk to them. They, they think I'm some space cadet. But it will come. Um, the U.S. Army is noted for being night warriors. They call us night warriors for a reason, because we operate at night. <coughs> we have NVDs, that stands for night vision devices. And when we come for you, it will be at night. It will not be in the daytime. We will come for you after 2 a.m. And you know why that is? Because that's when you're the most sleepy. You are biologically programmed to go to sleep at night. What do we do with infant children? Put them in bed, keep them up in the daytime, put them in bed at night. So you're programmed. And I can assure you at about two o'clock in the morning, you're gonna start zing. And that's when we're gonna come for you. There will be no knocking on the door. There'll be a flashbang, and we'll come and kill everybody. If that's if we're on a S and D mission, that stands for search and destroy. That will happen. It will be at nighttime. If it's in the daytime, we'll set up a roadblock, such as a flare pattern for a DWI check, and we may be looking for a specific person. That's what we did in Iraq. We would set up flare patterns, and and the police work they call it a dead man zone. In the army, it's called kill zone. And we're going to get you in there if we want you alive for questioning. We're going to set up some fictitious checkpoint, and we're going to, and that's how we're going to take you out of there. We're going to know everything about you. We have mobile GPS system that we can come underneath your car, and we can put it on there. It's about the size of a quarter, and we're going to know where you're at. We're going to use your neighbors. We're going to do all that to come and get you, and it's going to be successful unless you're preparing for it. Uh, everybody here should have a bug out bag. Now what you put in there is up to you but there is some things I would suggest to you. 
Number one is you need at least three to three, three to five days supply of food. You can go with MREs, Mountain House, uh, uh, all kinds of different different things, uh, trail, uh, uh, trail mix, but whatever you want, you, you need at least three to five days. You need medicine in there. You need an ample supply of ammunition dependent you know, the, the great concept in the world is to have a rifle with the same bullet and the pistol. So that way you got both of them. But that probably will not happen. Uh, in, in America, I would stick with the common calibers as far as a pistol goes. A 22 caliber would be the weapon of choice. If I had to go surviving, I'm taking me a 22 long rifle. Because I can carry a lot of ammunition with that little 22. And I can get anything that I want with it. But that said, I would stick with the 308, 5.56, 223, so forth and so forth in the rifles and with the with the with the with the uh, handgun, I would stick with the 38 9 mm, 45 something along those lines because there's ample supply of ammunition there. Don't get into the exotic stuff. Know the weapon inside out. You must be able to know that. And if you pull it, use it. Otherwise, don't do it. Because uh, then you're going to get the bad guy another gun, and I've seen that a lot of times in police work, where a homeowner would pull a gun, and the bad guy says, "You know what I'm going to do with that?" and walked over and took it. That don't make no sense. Don't do that. Train with it. You need to have pair a 550 card. 550 card is great because you can pull it out. You can use it for dental floss. You can use it for fishing line. You can use it for trip wire. Things of that sort. So there's things in there I'm going to want. I'm going to want a Leatherman tool. That's a multi-tool. Gerber or whatever, I'm going to have that. It's going to be in my, in my bug out bag. I'm going to have a compass. I'm going to have some things like that. I may have some gum, dental floss, toothpaste in there. Uh, I can put together a list for you if, if you if you want me to. As a matter of fact, I think I've already got one made up. Uh, the biggest thing that you can have besides having that bug out bag is you must have forward positioning of supplies. What that means is, in the worst case scenario, you need a place to go to that you can spend for up to 30 days. So you can get your thoughts together so you don't, <coughs> people that are scared and on the run make the wrong decisions. So you need some place that you can go to to spend up to 30 days to get your thoughts together, to listen, you need a radio there, so that you can listen to see what's going on in the world. And I would have at least three of those if I could. If you can't have but one, then you got one. But you need a place to go to that nobody knows about so that your husband can, 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 can deny that he knows where you're at. I have no idea where, where my militia wife took off to. She just needs gone. And you can pass a polygraph on that. That's what you need. Now, you, you don't need to keep a gold mine there, but you do need a place to go to where nobody else knows about and if you lose your supply because somebody finds it, it ain't no big deal. You want a change of clothing. If, if you come under attack, you must have that bug out bag with another set of clothes in there so that you can run down the street, up some stairs somewhere, and whatever you were wearing, take off, change clothes, because that totally confuses the pursuers. Totally drives them nuts. The reason the Army has you run two miles and the Marine Corps three miles, if you can stay ahead of the pursuer for that length of time, they will quit chasing you. They'll leave you alone. Because if you can stay ahead of them two miles, if you can do two miles on your own, unassisted, you're going to escape. The first three minutes of a contact with, with the adversary, if you don't get it done by then, you ain't going to do it. So you have to do it now, right then. So those are some of the things that you that you need to have you know, readily available. Um, MREs are good. Nothing wrong with them, but they can get bulky. Now, most MREs are a minimum of 1,500 calories up to 6,000. Depends on which one you get and what it is. So you have to have this stuff pre-planned, pre prepared. You have to have your head in the game. The most important thing I can tell you, Doc, is, is to have your head in the game. If you're in deniability that what's, what's coming is not here, you are already going to lose. You are already a liability. Uh, when, and as the situation starts to unfold, you don't want to get to know people too good. I think that's for the obvious reasons. Stay disconnected. Don't get too involved because 
you're going to have to make decisions that you've never thought that you would have to make. And I'm, I'm talking from personal experience. Um, it's not good. It's not good. If the world right now, I don't know how many people here, probably 15, 20. If you don't have your head in the game, probably most of you would never survive more than two weeks right now. Because you're going to make all the wrong decisions because you haven't played. And I'll talk to you just about food just for a minute. There are what they call food staples. Has anybody ever touched on this before? Food staples? Well, there are five. It's oats, corn, rice, wheat, and beans. If you have those in sufficient supply, you can live forever. Now, everybody here, we're all about the same age. You're going to need somewhere between 1,400 to 2,000 calories per day. That comes to about one pound of food. So if this thing goes for five years, how much food do you need to survive? Think about it. Okay. I can tell you right now, the U.S. military says that worst case scenario in America in a cataclysmic state, it could take up to 25 years to get out of it. If you remember the Depression, how long did it go? 1929 to World War II. That's how bad it can get. Now, American people, ladies and gentlemen, have never seen that. You, you haven't seen some of the things I have, that I have been involved in. And there's things in your life that I, haven't, that I haven't walked through either, and I understand all that. But I'm telling you, there's some hard times coming to America, in my opinion, because of the corruption. And the people that are corrupt don't know they're corrupt. They believe what they're doing is fine. They believe by putting you in prison is, the, is a good thing. Because right is wrong and wrong is right now. It's totally, it's totally reversed. Ladies and gentlemen, that ain't going to change. The good days are over with. It's gone. And I just had a great granddaughter. And she's in this mess. And it ain't going away. Get all of the medical training you can get. If you are not involved right now getting medical training, you are wrong. Because you're going to be doing surgery. Surgery. You need to study massive trauma. Gunshot wounds. Massive. A lot of wounds look worse than what they really are. Because they have it, they, they they have not hit an artery; they just hit a capillary. So you need to study everything about medicine. Get every book, get every get everything that you can get. And one of the biggest things I can tell you right now is start detoxing yourself of all these drugs and chemicals that's in our food. Start getting back to uh, nature. I mean, organic foods. Start getting into vitamins and things like that. Get detox yourself because it's it's killing you physically. Get away from that stuff. Grow your own food. Start getting a garden. Learn how to can. Learn how to. You must get off the grid, as, I, as what I'm telling you. Solar power is good. A generator. You should have a generator, at the very least, something. And you only need a small generator. You don't need a real big generator. Just something for people with diabetes, because because they're going to need insulin. And insulin has to be has to be has to be kept cool, unless you bury it in the ground. Now the Mennonites and people like that, what they do in the summertime, in the wintertime, is they'll go out and throw a bunch of hay in the pond. And that hay will freeze solid. They then take, cut that out in, in, in bale hay forms and they go into their barn and they put that in the center. Then they put all the other hay around that and, that's, and that will last all summer long keeping things cold. That's just so you know that. Okay? So you want to get off the grid right now as much as you can and start living like our ancestors. I'm not telling you not to have electricity. I don't want no, none of the women get mad at me. I don't want, I don't want none of that. And, and, I, and I know about the sports and the baseball. I'm not telling you that. But folks, you have to get into training right now. If you're not out camping in the woods, you're wrong. You got poison ivy, poison oak, shoemake out there. Okay? What are you going to do with it? If you, ain't got, if you ain't got no, well, you can use oatmeal for one thing. But what happens if you don't have no oatmeal? Oatmeal works good on poison oak and poison oak. Can work. What happens if you get a spider bite? What do you do? I'll tell you what you do. You get yourself some charcoal. <clears throat> By the way, this is called ditch medicine. You get yourself some charcoal with some paper. You put it in there and put it on there. That's what you do. What happens if you get gangrene? What do you do? You get you some maggots. Put them on it and let them go to eating. And when they start hurting, get the maggots out. Child time's over with. You know? You ain't have no more cheesecake. <laughs> then you can eat the maggots for eating you because you're hungry. So it's all it's all part of the food cycle. <laughs> it's the way it is. <laughs>
That's that, what I think you need to be doing. Is that cannibalism if they eat you and then you eat them? <laughs> well, you can sit there and trade off. He takes a bite and you take a bite. I mean, it all works out, you know. <laughs> but here's what I think is going to happen and why you need to start preparing for this. you got to get your head in the game that the country is changing. It's going to happen. Now, to me, it, it, uh, some of us already see the change. But you have not seen what I've seen, which is when that hits, then you will know what I'm telling you. You can't stop it because too many people are going to trade their freedom for security. And in the end, they're not going to have any. You need to start keeping a very low profile. Have any of you ever heard of a, something called the Main Corps? The Main Corps was something developed by Colonel Oliver North when he was in the NSA. And it's a list of people that they consider deviants. And at that time, it was up to 8 million. When you get home today, get in your computer, type in Main Corps or Rex 84 or Operation Garden Plot. Okay? You need to read that. There is a list of people that Homeland Security has that they are considered threats. And the midnight knock will come. It's going to come. My opinion, it is going to happen. I don't know when. But it will happen unless something changes at the local level. It has to change at the local level, not from up here. It's too corrupt. If Mr. Trump is elected, folks, he can't do it all. It has to come from under here and go up. That's why I'm doing what I'm doing. We have to get our hearts right with God, and that's not going to happen. There's not going to be no revival, in my opinion. Is the homosexual going to repent? No. Are the Muslims going to worship Jesus Christ? No. Are the Buddhists going to? No. Are the Hindus going to? No. Are the illegal aliens tearing our country apart going to leave? No. Are the inner city people going to make peace with you and you with them? No. So who's going to repent? You got an apostate church. You have a what they call a, a lukewarm church. Are any of those people going to repent? No. God says, if you humble yourself, I will heal your country. So who's going to repent? So it ain't going to happen. It's not, it's not coming. God hates evil. And he will punish sin in the here and now. Jesus Christ died on the cross. He punished it then. So there ain't going to be no good days. What's coming down the road, Doc, is coming. Wife, it's coming. It ain't, it ain't going to change. There ain't no politician going to stop this freight train. Now I can see it because I've been I've been in several countries and I've I've had some combat tours and I know how they all start. People will trade freedom for security every single time. And in the end they end up with a bullet in their head. You've got to get your head in the game folks for what's coming. It's here. If you were to resurrect a person that in 1980 from from being dead and they were to look at America today, they would think we were in, in communist China. We are tolerating irregularities. Men going in women's restrooms now and all this crazy, stupid stuff. You know, what in the world's wrong with a same-sex marriage by the Supreme Court? And by the way, we're not required to obey any law that's contrary to the Constitution. We're not, we don't have to do it, but we have to have men and women that says, no! And now, we're all going to die anyway. Die like a man. Die like a woman. Don't be no wimp. Stand up for your rights. Sergeant Major almost came out of me right then. <laughs> I'd rather die like a man on my feet than be down on my knees licking, licking crumbs off, off my oppressor's table, floor. That ain't going to happen to me. Been there, done that. Ain't, ain't happening. I've got, I've got too much at stake. So that's what's coming. You need to keep a low profile. If you're not really interested in this, you need to go offline, folks. You may have already escaped. Maybe they don't know who you are yet, but if you keep going down the road you're going down, they're going to know who you are. And deceit always comes from within. The people that have betrayed me the most, and Doc, you know what I'm talking about, came from within. The ones that have jammed me up the most are those people that I trusted the most. There's what you, in the Army, we have something called a compartmentation. That means we tell you exactly what you need to know and nothing else. That's all you need to know. 
when I would go on deployment, I told my wife exactly what she needed to know. I've got the will made out, the checks made out, and here it is. <laughs> That's all you need to know. <laughs> you don't need to know anything. Else. I left gas in the car. <laughs> Just tell them what they need to know. And if you've got some little squirrel coming around here talking to you about what do you do, you need to say stop. And if you've got somebody bragging about how many guns they got and uh, how many people they've killed and all that good stuff, you need to say, whoa, wait a minute, dude, I'm not into all that. There's something called a provocateur. And the, federal, and the federal system will try to infiltrate your group to get you to do things. So you have to know what's legal. Just simply say, we're not involved in all that. The Oath Keepers are a good example. They're a stellar organization. But the Southern Poverty Law Firm, Morris Dees, has listed them as a terrorist organization. It's not my opinion. So all the policemen think Oath Keepers are terrorists. That's where we're at today. And I don't think we've got much time left. I think after 2016, I think there's going to be an economic collapse of some sort, some kind of up, up, upheaval in the economic system. When that happens, that's going to facilitate riots all across the country. And somebody's going to stand up and say, we need to take, we need to confiscate the food because there's been executive orders already issued. And there's one thing that the Army does if you are a prepper, okay? and you've been doing things online or openly, they know where the food's at, and that's part of the supply system because they're gonna come for it. So you need to get your stuff off site, out of mind, away. Don't keep nothing in your house, no computer disk, nothing, because they would take it all. And they'll charge you with violating some act. Don't do it. If you've, if you've been publicly out doing this, they're coming to your house, I'm telling you. So don't leave them nothing to take, because that's part of the supply system for them. That's how they're going to do it. That's how they're going to resupply them system, is as they advance through town, they're going to know where the preppers are at, and they're going to start taking your stuff. So don't leave nothing in your house. Get it out. Don't give them anything. Now, each person in the house needs to have a bug out bag, and each person needs to have a place to go to that the other person don't know about for safety reasons, because I'm telling you, you can be made to talk. I, I'm telling you from experience, I've seen it. I've, uh, I've known of cases where the, the Muslim would bring somebody in and say, now you need to tell us what we want to know, and they wouldn't talk, so then they brought a three-month infant and said, now you need to talk to us. <laughs> Guess what, start talking. You think they're going to talk? Bet your life they will. Don't think you're so tough you can't be made to talk. Don't even think about it. There are men out there you've never met. They'll smile at you and act just as nice as you can be, but they're ruthless, and they'll do it. So you need safe places to go to. If you don't have them, get them. It doesn't have to be a luxury hotel. If you remember Saddam Hussein was captured in what they call a spider hole. He had it just big enough for him to move around, sleep in with some food. So you need at least three of those places, okay? where you have access to. You need to, tr you need to have what we call a ranger code. That is a communication system that you and your group only know about. Morse code is very good because nobody does it anymore. So if you don't know Morse code, you might want to, you might want to start redoing that. So you can sit and talk like you write, like you two gentlemen right here could, could sit there and tap and you could talk to each other. If a guy didn't know Morse code, they wouldn't know what you're saying. That's great during, a, during an interrogation. If you're sitting there, your wife over there, you can sit there and do one of these numbers. And you're telling your wife or your husband, shut your mouth, biggie, you big dummy. <laughs> it's a great thing because nobody knows Morse code no more. So I would really get into it. But you must have something. It's one thing that we used in the military is called a ranger code. Have you, have you ever looked in the back of a book at a, at a mileage chart? It's got a whole bunch of cities listed. You make it up like that and you run ABC across the top and ABC down the bottom. And then you start filling things in those blocks. And you go D down, X, Y over here. Say, because you got a D over here and a D up here, and they come together. And what, go get me some beer. Okay? That's what that means. Whatever you put in there, but everybody has to have a copy of that. That's what I think we need to be doing right now. Get yourself a generator that's mechanically pulled, get some solar power. Uh, diesel feels good for about two or three years. I think gasoline's good for two and rotate it. Prescriptions. If you have some kind of medical condition right now, you need to be storing up. Get as much of it as you can right now. Don't wait because that's when the first thing is going to go down. 
When we went into Afghanistan all into there, we took over everything. We took over hospitals, we took over communication, we took we shut the roads down, you couldn't travel. Everybody had to stay in their houses. Nobody could move. And some of the places had a shoot on site, and that is exactly what I mean. They just cap you and leave you. Simple as that. That's what I think is coming to America. I think we're one incident away from it. I think one incident of any magnitude will turn this country upside down, and people will willingly give up their freedom. And there's nothing you're going to tell them. I would expand my group right now to ever how many people. And, that, and after I reach that number, that would be the end of it. Because you have to watch people that will try to infiltrate your group to find out who you are to put you in federal prison. There's a prison out there waiting for every one of us right here, right now. It's there waiting. It's got your name on it. Once this thing starts rolling, and we're in that area now, we're on third base, and we're already 10, 10 feet off the baseline toward home. Whoever you got in your group right now, you may want to consider no more, or maybe one, ever how big you want to do it, but do it now, and then stop. Do not take any more people, because there are people out there, like yourselves, that are going to turn you in for gain. They will do it. It will come, and that's what I think is coming right now. The good days are gone. The good days are gone. But you have to keep hope. That's why you've got to get your spiritual house in order. And, and I don't mean to be down. I'm just telling you about what it's going to be like. Electricity will go down. Our ration. Food will be gone. They're going to move large cities. It, it, it always does the same thing. People in the large cities will come to the country. That's what they did in Bosnia. The city, uh, the, 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 the people in Sarajevo went out to the country and they killed and raped everybody. Then they went back to the city where they got killed. So they all, and, and, and the army says they'll come out for 30 days. After 30 days, the city people go back. City people cannot survive in the country, but the country people can survive in the country. City people do not do good in the country. But they'll come out for 30 days, and they'll eat everything, destroy everything, then they'll head back to their death. That's what they did all over Bosnia. That's why so many of them got killed. They didn't know how to grow their own food. They didn't know how to, what poison ivy was. They didn't know anything. And they're all going to go out there and hunt Bambi. But what do you do when Bambi's gone? <laughs> what do you hunt then? When I was in, when I was in M D North, there was nothing alive. No frogs. No birds. No deer. No snakes. No fish. No dead. Everything was dead. Because the city people came out and took everything. And they come out in hordes. Hordes. By the hundreds. And they don't have no ambition about harming you. None. None. So learn everything about medicine that you can and prepare. Don't get into refrigerated stuff. Stay away from it. You want the, you want the oats, corn, rice, wheat, and beans and things like that. You can live on that. You may not be happy, but you'll be alive <coughs> and you'll be taking care of your family. And lastly, I would tell you, is after you get your spiritual house together and you admit that we're in trouble, you need to get in physical shape, period. If you are not out walking, you're dead, and you're dead meat. And if I was the group, I'd cut my losses with you. It's just that simple. You're going to have to make some, and, I, and I've seen this. It's hard. It's hard. You've got an anchor around you. If you cannot move for at least two miles on your own, you need to cut your losses. That's cold. That's hard. But I've had to make those decisions, and so will you. You will make those decisions, and I'll tell you why you're going to have to do it. If that person is not willing to get in some kind of shape now, what do you think they're going to do when this happens? There'll be a drain on you. Now, I can teach you how to purify water and all that stuff <coughs> if you want. I, I can help you with all that. It's not hard to do. But if the person is not willing to start doing something now with the group, what are they going to do when that comes? Now, I think the movie Walking Dead is a really a good joke. I mean, I, I, I almost shoot the TV every time I see it. <laughs> but they do have some good stuff in there for tactics. I would suggest that you all go learn how to play paintball. Paintball is very good. Tactics are very good. Start out with a BB gun. Uh, don't try to teach somebody a weapon with a large caliber because they'll, learn, they'll flinch. Start out with a BB gun. So that they learn the basics, the breathing, the trigger pull, and build your way up to a 22 caliber. And when they get to 22 down, then go to something a little bit more. 
But the biggest thing is, and then I'm done talking, is you have to get your head in the game. Because, ladies and gentlemen, the America that all of us know is done. Donald Trump's not going to change all this. It's not going to happen. Because they're trying from the top down. Everybody's putting their faith in him. When they should be looking to Jesus, they're looking to him. And he's only one man. Look at all the idiots underneath of him and the bureaucrats that's going to stop it. If he tries too much, they'll impeach him. So we have to do it down here with us. And then we have to build up. But there are challenging times coming. Very challenging. And it will come like that. Watch the stock market. When you start to see the roller coaster, you know it's getting close. There'll be a big spike, and then it will go down. They'll repair it, and then it'll go up again for a few months, and then it will collapse. And when that happens, the banks close. If you have money, I would keep the majority of it out, someplace safe. And I would keep it in $20 denominations or less so you can make those final purchases. Now, don't everybody head for Walmart Pharmacy at one time, because that's the first place I'm going. Don't everybody do that. Okay? <laughs> I just want everybody to know that now. <laughs> I'm either going to Heartland or Render somewhere. I'm heading, I'm heading for the pharmacy, because <laughs> you're going to need it. Uh, so you want to watch the stock market. I personally believe that there's going to be an EMP attack of some sort. When the EMP tax is all over with, and then it could be followed up by a pandemic. If you remember the Spanish flu, it killed 35 million people in 1918. People are not prepared for it. They're physically unfit. I'm not saying they're not good. They're just physically not, not good to do anything. And their mind is not in the game. Uh, get out into the woods. Do it in the winter. Do it in the summer. You know, if you're out here sleeping in the snow, you can put leaves down inside your pants as insulation. No, you can do all that. If you have diarrhea in the woods and you've got no diarrhea medicine, get some charcoal and put about a teaspoon in water and drink it. That will help. There's little things you can do like that, but you have to learn those things now. And you've got to get out of the house, get out of the, get out of the easy chair, and get out and get this done. The last thing I would tell you is the Bosnians did this a lot. They would take a bicycle and put a little wagon on the back of it, and that's how they would move. It's better than carrying a 90-pound pack. You can get your bicycle, put a little wagon on the back, and pull your stuff. That's much easier. If you're going to get a vehicle, I would get a four-wheel drive. Avoid electronic ignition. You can go back to prior to 1984, I believe, and get you points and plugs, a car like that. It doesn't have to be the best-looking thing in the world, but it needs to be ready to go. But you do need a four-wheel drive. If you don't want to do that, get yourself a diesel, because the military has plenty of diesel fuel. The military has plenty of diesel fuel. You all know that, right? So if your tank runs dry, I'm sure they'll help you with refueling your vehicle, okay? <laughs> but you're going to have to come up there and talk to them. Very nice. <laughs> That's about all. Anybody have any questions for me? I have one question. Yes, sir. Um, back to the mask thing. Yes. Um, how, how good do you rate the Israeli gas mask com compared to this? Israeli mask is very good, but some of them don't have a drinking tube. The, the general population, the ones they have, they do not have a drinking tube on them. Now what these do here, either one of these, you can put a camelback on and hook this to a camelback. You must, you must hydrate yourself. Must. I cannot emphasize that enough. Either one of these are good. I, uh, I, I, I wore this for 10, 12 years. I never had a problem with it. I've slept with it on. I've been in over 100 degree heat with it on. This, this will do everything. And they're on eBay right now for about 40, 50 bucks. They come in small, medium, and large. Nothing wrong with this. The only thing I caution you on is when you sleep. You need somebody to watch you, okay? And don't forget, this here is set up for, for a right-handed shooter because it's on this side. I'm left-handed, so it has to go over here. Either one of these are good. Now, either one of these masks, if it has a lot of cracks and breaks in it, don't want to get it unless you know how to repair it. Stay away from it. But the Israeli mask is good, but I don't think they have a. I don't think that I don't think the average one has a drinking tube on it. Yeah, I, I bought I, I bought uh, several of them, and, and the ones that I did buy do have a drinking. Well, tube. then you're good. It's good. Yes, sir. Can you put any either one of those? Can you put the filter in the middle? Because a lot of times uh, no. in situations I switch sides. With no, these here are set up for one side or the other. Okay. Can't change them. Yes, sir. How do you? Uh, you're talking about the the one with the filter on one side for shooting. 
What about the one that has a filter on both sides? Well, this here allows you to shoot because it's not going to interfere with it because your head can get down on the stock with it. That's why this went like this. The lower profile. This, this is very low. It's not going to interfere with your sights. That's the 50? Yeah, this is the M50. Now, they're up to an M53 already, but the changes on it are, are minute, cosmetic. It really, the mask is the same, does the same thing. This should be a very high priority of everybody. Everybody here needs to be looking at a protective mask. The only thing some of these will not work is carbon monoxide. You have to get the right filter for carbon monoxide. But other than that, they will filter out anything that can be thrown at you. Okay, these are very, either one, either one of these is very good. But this filter will not, help, will not help you with carbon monoxide. You have to have a different filter or what we call a riot filter, such as a police filter. These are military filters. You know, they're not police filters. So you can go on online and order the ones that you want. But this should be a very, very high priority with everybody here if, you, if you're into prepping. Yes, sir. I would say extra filters, too, because yes. I, uh, I, I don't recall what the uh, lifespan of the filter is, is when you're, it's in constant use. Well, here's, uh, no, I can tell you what it is. Uh, either one of these, it doesn't matter. If you are in a contaminated environment, this is good for up to a month in the most filthy rag, oil rag you can have. And you can recharge these if you want to take it off okay take it off and when you get into a clear environment okay you're good set it out into the sun and after five de five days to ten days it will recharge itself and it's perfectly good but they'll go up to a month those are the natos the NATO yeah these are nato specs yes <clears throat> well if in the event of an emp what is our vulnerability from nuclear power plants going into meltdown <laughs> Probably very good. Uh, I didn't talk about this, and I didn't know how much you wanted me to get into. Does, there, does anybody not know what a Faraday cage is? Okay. A Faraday cage is something designed to prevent an EMP attack from destroying your, your stuff. Okay. You could take you could take this trailer right here and get up into the ceiling, and you could take wire and line line the entire ceiling, and it will stop a, a EMP attack on you. I've seen people even build a, a Faraday cage for their car. What they did was they went out there and they put four uh, uh, four by fours in the ground and they chick and they took chicken coop wire and put on the top of it and all around it. And the way that they know that it works is they would drive their car in there and turn the radio on. If the radio works perfectly, they got it wrong. If it's statics, it's working. And then what they would do is they'll take a ground wire. Now the ground is very important on this. You have to hook the ground wire to the chicken coop wire and go down at least eight feet and put salt around it to do it right. Just like they would your house. If you build a house, somebody's going to come out and drive a ground rod down and that's how they're going to do that. So you can build an actually Faraday cage for your entire car if you want. Uh, or you could take an ammo can and if you got keep your radials in one side and your batteries in the other and put them inside the ammo can but line them with something so that the radios don't come in contact with the metal. That's the key thing. So if you've got stuff like that that you want to keep, I would build those right now. A gun safe? A gun safe, I don't know. Probably would work, yes. Probably would, yes. Yeah, As, I, heard, I heard a microwave would work. Yeah, that'll work. Now there are some people, uh, we have a friend of ours named John. He sells some kind of a pouch that you could put some stuff in that, that works also. There's things you can get for that, but I don't want to spend the money. I just soon go, because because uh, if I buy an ammo can, it's going to have ammo, so I get to shoot bullets, and when they're gone, then I got this. So I, you know, <laughs> so I, I, I solve problems. <laughs> Everything that you get should have two purposes for it, at the most. It should always have two purposes. But I, I would get to working on that Faraday cage right now. That's why you need to plan to be off-grid. You need to make plans to live like our pioneer fathers, and, and great parent, that's what you need, and then hope for the best. Now, uh, folks, I'm not telling you not to go out and have fun, because every day that we can do what we're doing now is a blessing. And you're gonna find out in combat that the most hardest thing is loneliness. I, I know you've all had your issues, I've had mine, but I'm telling you, you don't know loneliness until you're getting shot at. Then you will know what I'm talking about. It's a big black cauldron, and that's what kills you. So you have to learn to take one day at a time. Every day that you can peck your wife on the lips with a kiss, that's a blessing. It really is. And we've lost that. Every day that you can get up and say, yep, 
last gut night was good. That's good because you haven't been you haven't you haven't been some places I've been. You know when we was over there, it was 120 degrees in the sun. We didn't have no air conditioning in those tents, and the heat index would get up to 150. And I tried that on for a year. So every day that you get to sit back here and socialize with with godly people and and, and, and people of kindred spirit, that's a blessing. Don't worry about the stuff down the highway, but you have to plan for that day down the highway. Sitting around wishing and hoping ain't gonna get it done, folks. Them days are gone. So if you do what you need to do today, you don't have to worry so much about tomorrow. But your health is gonna be a big one. You've you've got to get you got to detox yourself. Get get away from all that food. Gr grow your own food. I mean, I, you know I don't have a lot of knowledge about that, but we we, we try to eat a lot of vegetables and things like that. Uh, healthy. We, we grow our own vegetables in the summertime. You, you have to you have to detox yourself. It's it's unhealthy for you. Anything else? On the medication thing, when you said Walmart, you're talking about robbing it, right? After the I apocalypse. Did not use it. <laughs> now there's a term after the apocalypse. There, there's a term in the army that we use. We we are going to redo our 1092s for for another requisition. Commandeer. Gotcha. <laughs> we're going to clarify that. We're we're going to do what we need to do because <laughs> I take quite a few medications, and I've always thought that's the first place I'm going. Well. You better give me better have a radio. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't talking about Walmart. I was talking about the local place. Because, because, uh, block away. because <laughs> yeah, have you I ever seen an M29 five-ton military vehicle? It's five ton. That's what I'm taking. <laughs> Anything gets in my way, I'll run over. <laughs> but uh, uh, there, there's an old term that we use, and I don't know how else to say it. It's called the five Ps. Have you ever heard of this? I, I kind of hate to say it. Piss-poor planning produces piss-poor performance. <laughs> Okay, that's about